Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology, your co-host. And joining us, as usual, is Martin Patella, Life Enthusiast Health Coach. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Happy to be connecting with you. This is a treat. <laughs> Here I am in my little dungeon studio, and you are globetrotting. I vicariously live through you, hearing that you're in Colombia and that that you're doing okay, and that Colombia is not the horrendous trap of cocaine like we might no. be led to believe. All that. How it's a it? beautiful. It's a beautiful country. The people are really friendly. Uh, they speak Spanish. I don't, so that's a bit of a challenge. But everywhere I've gone, they've been just uh, tremendously. Uh, outgoing and friendly and helpful. They know a little bit of English, some of them, some of them don't. Uh, but I love my iPod, my because I just have the address that I want to go on it. I show it to them. They look, the, particularly the taxi drivers, they look at it and either direct me or take me. And so I've never not gotten where I wanted to go. And uh, were you able yeah. to access the translate function yet? Yes, Google Translate is excellent. And uh, there's actually a it, Google. Right? translate app that's really good too. The only problem is you have to be connected to the internet. Yeah. If you're not connected. Nothing. Right. Okay. Nothing. So I don't use it very much, although I'm thinking um, I'm going to have to start using it a bit more because it's more than just being able to point at some piece of food that I want and, and getting it. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful city. It reminds me very much of uh, Vancouver, if Vancouver had a mirror, because one side of Vancouver, as you know, is all mountains, and then the other side is the plains going down to uh, Washington State. Uh, Medellin has mountains on both sides, so oh, yeah. it's kind of in the valley, and you can look one way, and you see, it reminds you of Vancouver. You turn around, look the other way, it reminds you of Vancouver without the snow-capped mountains. Yeah, no snow. Right? Not, not that, and it's called the City of Eternal Spring. So, much to my surprise, I thought I would be sweltering here. Like Panama was very hot, and it was humid. And here, it's kind of like a nice April, May, sunny day. <laughs> okay. So it cool down at night, and it's just yeah, it's a very very nice okay. climate. It's one of the reasons why I like coming here. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, so lots of fun. And of course, part of the challenge is making sure I have a good internet connection. And then I didn't realize uh, the sun goes down. So everyone, every place that's been bright where I am <clears throat> is now not so bright. <laughs> the lighting. I'll have that figured out for next week. Okay, great. And uh, have you learned anything about their health care system, anything? Do you have any information or? Nah. No, none at all. I know that they're very, very concerned about the Zika virus. There's a lot of people that are getting sick uh, or they're showing up in the hospitals or at the doctors with something and and they're uh, attributing it to the Zika and to the mosquitoes. I've only seen one mosquito and unfortunately for him, I saw him first and he's <laughs> a little mess on the sheet in my bed. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, as long as you're three or four floors up from the ground, they don't go up high into the air. No, they don't. And uh, what the mistake I have made is wearing my thongs. And what I find is my ankles have four or five or six bites. I can't say lots because then you'd imagine hundreds. It's yeah. not, it's four or five or six, yeah. and uh, but consistent. Right. So it's just kind of like, that's one place they like, and I guess they like the wrists. Yeah. Haven't had that problem. Right on. And I haven't felt, you know. Yeah. nothing. I, I mean, I, it's not like I've drank the tap water and it's not like I'm going out into the wilderness or anything else like that, but uh, I haven't had any problem with the food, any problem yes. with anything that I've drank, or no Montezuma's Revenge this far south Great. of Mexico. Yeah. You know what's interesting is I listened to some news program recently that was discussing uh, mosquitoes, and it was stated the mosquito is the most murderous animal on the planet. It yeah. kills millions, like six million people every year die because of mosquitoes. And most of it because of malaria. 
Yeah. But then there's some of the yellow fever, dengue fever, and whatnot. But what's interesting? Oh, now I remember. It was Bill Gates talking. He was uh, uh, he was on an interview with Charlie Rose, which uh, keeps me informed. And <laughs> anyway, so Bill Gates was talking about how um, malaria is killing a lot of people, and that that they're working on doing something about it. Which reminded me yeah. that there is a solution. The solution is oxychlor, also known as MMS, which we mm. are selling in our store under the Aerobic 07 label. But anyway, oxychlor is essentially bleach, but it needs to be activated. Like when you get the, the product itself, that's non-active, but when it hits an acid or in, interacts with some acid, it activates and releases the chlor and the oxygen and now you have bleach in the body. And uh, the small creatures, the viral, bacterial, amoeba, uh, the little things. They, the parasites? The, those. They really don't like it. It's very hostile towards them. And hmm. um, anyway, so um, Jim Humble has been for years crusading for what he calls MMS, oxychlor. And he took it to all kinds of countries. And he's actually now taking a totally different approach because he was being ignored. So well, let me say the study that they did. Here's an interesting story. Uh, it was in either Kenya or Uganda. Can't think of which. The, they went to the Red Cross, local people, found 160 willing subjects that they were able to confirm with a blood test that they are malaria positive, gave them the treatment, which costs 25 cents. And the next day, all subjects were malaria free, again, tested by Red Cross staff. And they recorded all of this, posted it on YouTube and uh, pushed it to the head office of Red Cross. And guess what? Buried it. Buried it. Totally suppressed it, buried it. It never happened. The person that was there that you are looking at in the video said, nope, I was not there. That is not me. And wow. this never happened. And yet the evidence is in. So anyway, the Red Cross under the hands of the big pharma does not want to use a 25 cent per person, per treatment solution that does away with malaria. They would just as soon if another three or four million people died every year. It's especially children who die. Yeah. And so just to talk, there's another place. Most of the malaria deaths are in deepest, darkest African jungles yes. where the mosquitoes are, are totally rampant. I, sp I suspect there's probably a fair bit in South America as well. Um, the other place in the world where there used to be huge malaria outbreaks and haven't had any since around 1938 or 1940 is the southern United States. And what they did was they went through this huge... Eradication? Um, well, no. What they did is they said, how do you control the mosquitoes? Yeah. Water. So the, everywhere that they had... Uh, standing water, they drained it or they put some stuff on top of it. I think at one point it was DDT. I know in Panama they used DDT when they were building the Panama yes. Canal. But the whole point was you get rid standing of water. the yeah. breeding grounds of the mosquito. You put screens on your doors. You put screens on your windows. So you keep them out and netting if you need to, but I don't think they do netting. And as long as you don't get bitten by a mosquito, you don't get malaria. And the result is, is that then, and they do this, I mean, they're on it all the time, right? They're always looking, you know, they look for cracks in the road. They look for standing water, oh, yeah. right? Same thing. And they make sure it's gone. And the result is, is that there's been not a case of malaria in the United States with, and not because they've cured it or anything. They've just stopped the cause of it. I mean, if you've got 3,000 mosquito bikes, you, you have a problem. If you have one or two, it's usually not a problem. The other part of it, of course, is 
we feed the children in the United States way better than we feed the children in the Ivory Coast. And, you know, they have clean water and they don't drink and play in their poop and they have refrigeration and all these are the things that come along to it. And to me, the answer to it is if you have healthy people in a fairly healthy environment, you don't have a major problem. And it's been the same with pretty much all of the diseases that we've seen that have killed young people children for thousands of years once you look after their basic health and the cleanliness a lot of those problems they're only a problem when your immune system has been compromised right when you're really weak when you're starving well yeah these so it's funny to say you know we we give it malaria is the problem but you could just as easily say the malnutrition is the problem sleeping in your poop is the problem right but we want to give it just malaria we say, well, the mosquito had it, gave it to you, and that's why you died. Well, the mosquito could give it to a million people in the United States, you know, just one bite, not going to make a difference. And I think you often talk about the little camel, you know, it's, it's able to look after this piece and this piece and this piece, but all of a sudden you put one more on and the poor animal just sits down and doesn't go anywhere. And I think the mosquito is kind of that... <laughs> final straw for a lot of people in Africa. Yeah, I'd like to look back to Zika, which, wouldn't you know it, it's mostly in northeastern Brazil, around Recife or someplace up there, where a lot of the hydrocephaly, no, microcephaly uh, babies were being born. And this is also yes. the poorest, most undernourished, and most polluted with herbicide, pesticide, and who knows what else going on, eradication kind of stuff going on. So yes. is it really Zika or is it the condition of the people that is the primary problem? That's a great question. And uh, unfortunately, we know what uh, the mainstream medical people are going to say. Right? Well, the pharma, the pharma companies want to find chemical solutions to the chemical problem. I mean, this is the circular thinking of the, uh, maybe we should start calling it the engineer's mind or the, the techno brain, where you yeah. are seeking technical solutions to problems caused by technical solutions. Oh yeah. As if you could solve a problem of too much toxicity with another toxic input. Right. You just reminded me of the song, the famous old song, I'm sure you've heard of it, about the woman who swallowed a fly. <laughs> and she died. So she swallowed the fly. Don't ask me why. So she swallowed a spider to catch the fly. Don't ask me why she swallowed the fly. And she swallowed, what did she swallow after that? It basically works its way up all the way to a horse. And then she died, of course. But it was just kind of, it, she just kept swallowing something to look after what it was that yeah, she yeah, swallowed yeah. previously until finally it was like yeah. she's gone. Using an increasingly yeah. bigger gun to address the uh, problem of guns until you blow it all up. Ugh. That's right. So you had a article that you wanted to talk about having to do with... Um, mm -hmm why people are choosing not to vaccinate. Yeah. And the other thing we wanted to talk about was uh, the, well, the issue with pharmacy. The yeah. big are, pharma. we able to, are we able to show us picture in this lab? No. Uh, no, okay. We can't. But what I'll do is I will okay. put both of the pictures into the YouTube channel. Okay. I had, this, I had this lovely graph that's on this article that I would like to reference. And the, the graph uh, shows the global annual pharmaceutical industry revenues in billions of dollars. So global, around the world, annual, every year, pharmaceutical industry only, revenues in billions. And in 2003, it's about 500 billion. And in 2014, which is 10, 11 years later, it's over a trillion, thousand billion. So they, they doubled their revenue in 10 years, which just says they're growing. They're growing healthy. They're growing big. That's a good, that's a, that's green momentum. 
Yeah, momentum we got. And then this second part of that picture shows average profit margin by industry. Automobile industry is somewhere around five or six percent. Oil and gas somewhere around seven or eight. Media, like television and whatnot, somewhere allow around 12 and pharma at 18. I would love to be able to make 18% after tax profit margin. That is just so rich, unbelievably rich. And that's because they're able to uh, sell things for a lot of money that costs very little to make. Right. And the stats that we're looking at are current as of 2013 and the source was Forbes magazine. If you want to check it out. Right. Yeah. So th the point of that is that they are exceedingly healthy. They have managed to create a situation through political mani manipulation such that it's unbelievable. What they did is they managed to separate the consumer from the price and the product. The way we have it is I go to a doctor who doesn't care what it costs me or what it costs anybody and picks a solution, offers it to me. I go to fill it. I don't even see the bill. It's just handed to me. And the bill for that goes to an insurance company that fulfills that. And then the yeah. bill goes into the central clearing, which is called health insurance. And all of us collectively pay for it. Meaning, I don't know what it costs me. I don't care what it costs me. And uh, I just want it. Yeah, you're right. It's a brilliant scheme, right? Like if people will take tons of stuff if they don't have to pay for it. Once you have to pay for it, then they start analyzing it or even if you have even if you don't pay for it but you know how much it is because you were reminding me uh when i spent my month or so in the hospital a year and a half ago uh i never received any thing no piece of paper saying because i mean saying you know it was like ten thousand dollars it was a hundred thousand dollars it was a million dollars there was nothing there to say scott this is how much we've spent on you and now here's the thing that's really weird about that if you were the government and you wanted goodwill don't you think that the first thing you would do is say scott we just spent two hundred thousand dollars saving your life aren't we wonderful yep but they didn't why not because nobody wants anybody to have a clue what the micro costs are right they know that this room cost you know 10 million dollars a year or whatever but scott was only there for 30 days so he doesn't get they don't figure out the pro rate or, or anything yeah. like that yeah. and maybe it's an accounting nightmare too i don't know right like no. how do you charge me for the nursing time when she comes in for two minutes here and three minutes there and four minutes somewhere else well the same but, way you do it in manufacturing you're essentially staying in a hotel mm -hmm. okay and a hotel with nurses so it's like a hotel in a normal downtown hotel you get prostitutes or whatever other services that you might want to call upon. But in the pizza, hospital, let's go with the pizza. You phone in for the pizza. Oh, well, okay. Services. Sure. <laughs> Shoe polish. Everyone likes, everyone likes your example about the prostitutes. We'll stay that with it. Okay. It you know, yep. I tell you, the only difference between me as an accountant and me as a prostitute is how close I get to the customer. <laughs> The rest is just time for service. I have no illusions about morality of any of it. Okay. But anyway, All right. I do not judge accountants for not getting close to their customers. <laughs> but the Go point ahead. is, so hotel plus nurses yep. plus pill distribution is all you have. Right. So you know how to run a hotel. Hilton knows how to run a hotel and so does Marriott and whoever. They can run a hospital better than any hospital would run a hospital. All you have to yep. do is just overlay the services. And we know what Marriott charges because they are competing with other hotels. They can't not compete with other hotels. Right. 
anyway, hospitals, yeah. they don't compete with anybody. They just charge what the what the well they don't charge me either they just charge yeah who knows who they charge right yeah depends on the system that you're under and oh. uh, but i think this just brings us back to the same thing with what you were saying about the pills and big pharma is there's no there is that disconnect between the, the payment and the responsibility and the accountability and the people that are concerned about it right right so yeah. this was a great argument for single payer system if mm -hmm. there is a single payer system, the payer, the government, should be interested in managing the costs. Because if they can, if they're responsible for the whole thing, it would, it should make sense that they want to minimize the whole cost. But because, but because they have unlimited ability to fund, they don't care. That's the difference, right? Yeah. So two things, right? One is in Canada, where you have a single payer system, it still runs rampant because uh, the government doesn't get to say what is or isn't a reasonable cost because they they pass it off to whom? The doctors. The doctors decide what's the reasonable thing to do, but the doctor doesn't care about the cost and the patient no. doesn't care about the cost. So. I want my hip replaced. I don't care that it costs $27,000. That's right. That's the other thing that distinguishes this area that we're talking about from going to a regular hotel, right? Because I can call the Marriott up and they can say it's 200 bucks a room, Scott. And I go, thank you very much. And I'm going to call 888 and they'll say it's $25 a room and I'll say I'll take it. Right. But the, th the thing is, is I don't really care if I have a couple lumps in my bed. I do care if I have a broken arm and the guy's, you know, never fixed an arm before. He just got out of medical school. And, yes. You know, so, I mean, there is that we have to make that sort of distinction, too, when right. it comes to like, I'm not going to try to to convince the doctor you should charge half as much because I'm a nice guy. Hold on. And I got a broken Hold arm. On. You just made an excellent point for a single payer, multiple delivery streams system. Competitive delivery single payer yep yeah which we don't have we don't have it in canada we don't have it in the united states either there's no competition no there's no reason to to be you know and no reason to watch the pennies is the big thing right i mean yeah. we all know that in in a lot of bureaucracies and a lot of large corporations like i remember once there was some company like 10,000 people they let go i don't know how many hundreds of thousands they had and then three months later, somebody went back and did a study. Nobody noticed that they were gone, right? They were not missed. So they were not missed. So, you know, there's how hard are people actually working compared to how hard they could be working? I mean, these, there's always these standards. At, at the grocery chain that I ran, we noticed, I noticed something really interesting. And that was if I hired somebody to be a bagger in July, he was a very, very poor bagger compared to the one I hired in November because in November you had Christmas yeah. and you had huge lineups and you had, you got to get these people out and you got to move, you got to move. So they learned to move when they were bagging their groceries. If in, in the summertime, uh, you know, nothing's happening. Everyone's at the beach, blah, blah, blah. And they didn't learn a fast speed. So they thought this speed was uh, okay yeah, right okay. 10, Which 10 was, items per minute as opposed to 40 right yeah and it was okay in july but in december it was terrible right okay. and we'd be looking at these guys and going why why are you know because we'd have two groups right the group we hired in november and the group we hired in july we're like why are these guys so different yeah. is because the ones that were sort of thrown into the fire and they had to hustle that was their baseline yeah. the ones that and because in january when it was quiet they could all slow down but at easter when it got busy they got busy again right they, so they, they had the, the flexibility. Gear, right? they, they had the gear, gear. Yeah. but the guys that started in, in the summertime they had one gear and it was like come on you guys move we are we're moving this was fine in in the summer i don't know why you're complaining now well because it's christmas time and there's 30 people in line <sighs> in your line and there's four people in the other guy's line because he's moving them through and you're not yeah okay <laughs> so how do we compare this or loop it back to the healthcare? by putting pressure in the right places 
what what really is interesting in management consulting, which I was back when, the word was whatever is measured is what gets taken mm -hmm. care of. That's right. So if you measure something, you get results in it. If you don't measure it, couldn't care less. And because we yeah. don't measure costs, yeah, we also don't measure outcomes. Yeah. How is it possible that United States kills 150,000 people in every year through just properly applied medical care? Did you say properly applied or? Oh, yeah, applied without a mistake. Without a mistake. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Then there is the mistakes on top. I think about 700,000. I have an article on the website. I forget now, but I think it was about 700,000 people a year are killed in the medical system. And I the medical think, system did everything that they were supposed to do according to their book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think uh, your doctor is more dangerous than your gun. And almost as dangerous as your mosquito. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I get <laughs> lost in the numbers. But, yeah. um, avoid but doctors, maybe, avoid mosquitoes as long as you can. So I was in the process of making a point, right? Which yes. was single payer system is intelligent, but no, the Americans just wouldn't have it because the insurance companies didn't want it and uh, Obama caved, right? So instead of an intelligent approach, they have this uh, horse traded setup that's just pathetic. And then, then where they should have opened it up to proper competition, capitalism, all the good things that are good about capitalism, which is competing for services, they closed it up. So you have two of the worst things possible. You have a multiple payers, balkanization, and you have single delivery system. What a gift. So the lobby from the doctors, the American Medical Association, gets together with the lobby from the insurance companies, the Cigna and uh, I don't know what other names. Um, the, the one with the duck, Aflac. Quack, quack. <laughs> and anyway, I'm sure they get together with the old folks association and they get together with the hospital association yeah. and they all put together what they want and then they have a united front and then who can fight that so i think we have about as bad system as it possibly could be it's a big payola we yeah, all yeah. pay in fact the americans especially i mean you and i with the canadian system our cost is about half of what it costs an american for the same thing right and yet we have one tenth the population so you would think that we wouldn't have um the volume because they always say volume drops stuff down right so we wouldn't have the volume to be that much cheaper but and then again you look at what certain countries are paying for their medicines compared to what the united states pays and yeah. it's pretty outrageous the difference brutal huge cost for that's that's for pills yes but i'm talking about for the service for the system mm -hmm. I, I I love to quote this number. Uh, in Czech Republic, where I grew up, they legislated that an insurance company can process claims so long as it's up to three and a half percent of the amount. Right. So you can charge an administrative processing fee up to three and a half percent. You can compete down. Sort of like real estate, where you can have a commission of 7% or 5% or 3% on the deal, right? Right. Same sort of concept. In the United States, the insurance companies get away with 25 and 30%. Wow. No wonder they can build themselves these super skyscrapers and pay executive perks and uh, whatever, whatever. Can you believe spending 25% of the amount on... I don't know. How would you feel about selling your house if the realtor took 25%? Not good. Yeah. Like, is it effective? Yeah. Is it equitable? Is it like what? You, we, we get into the realm of empire building here, Martin, because in Winnipeg, Manitoba, 
my ex-wife was a dental hygienist and it was $30 a year to be a dental. That was the license for the Association of Dental Hygienists. Okay. In Vancouver, it was $400 a year. Okay. Wow. How did that happen? Well, the board of directors of the Vancouver Dental Hygienist Group decided that they had a little bit of money in the kitty and that they were going to build themselves a really nice office. Yeah, head office. So they bought, they bought this building, they renovated the building, and instead of having whatever they had in the bank, they now had a debt of four or five hundred thousand dollars. And in order to service that mortgage, they needed to raise the rates from the original thirty or forty, whatever it was, mm -hmm. up to four hundred dollars, because otherwise they couldn't have, they'd go bankrupt, right? right? And so these people created this beautiful place for them to work in, um, with the result being that they have this, uh, I was going to say obsessive, uh, obscene uh, yes. fee that now they're charging these dental hygienists, right? right? And this reminds me of the uh, boondoggle with uh, British Columbia uh, Hydro. Uh, there's this single company in British Columbia that runs electricity. They have been given the monopoly. They, in their wisdom, decided that, no, it was not good enough to have the old analog meters that were perfectly fine and serviceable for the next 50 years. Instead, they wanted to go modern, digital. Who knows what other reasons they may have had for that. And the cost for doing that is $1.2 billion for their, I don't know how many customers they have, um, maybe... Uh, two or three million sites two or three million sites yeah so that's poof. a lot of money poof right money goes and it has to come from somewhere guess who's get gets to pay for it yeah the customer but the customer is a captive customer the customer can't walk away i have no choice yep. i'm theirs they own me so where is the fiduciary uh, behavior, responsibility, accountability. Responsibility, yeah. accountability. To whom are they accountable, if not me, the payer? But they're not. How is it possible that that decision maker, whoever he was, doesn't have his nuts in a vice? He left, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, he deserves to have been yeah, kicked. I don't think he left because he had to leave. I think he just decided to go do something else. It wasn't that he was forced out or anything. I, mean, <laughs> I, I know the person who is the cha chairman of Hydro. <laughs> he went off to do some other thing. He just had enough. And uh, wow. maybe lovely. he left before he knew what was coming came or I don't know. But it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane what they do. And see, it's really interesting, too, in that they want to have both. They want to have the cake and eat it, too, because in places like Hawaii, get a lot of sun, they started putting up all these suns, uh, solar panels, and the solar panels created more electricity than the house consumed. So it went into the grid. The grid was a little old and archaic. So just imagine an island the size of Vancouver, yeah. I, you know, a quarter of Vancouver Island. Yeah, and it's, it, they can't upgrade the electrical system for, you know, like how can you not do that, right? I mean, it's not like New York City having to upgrade. It's just, it's, it's a city of 3 million people in Honolulu, right? And then there's, I don't know, 10,000 people living outside Honolulu. Anyway, they, and they basically said, you can't, you cannot do this. You cannot add more solar panels to more houses. Now we can't handle it. And you cannot disconnect from the electrical grid. Because yeah. just think about it for a second. If you had solar panels and this, the hydro company said, you can't uh, do that because it's going to ruin our grid, no problem. I don't need your electricity. Just cut it off. I'll put a couple batteries in case I am down or it's a cloudy yeah. day. Yeah. And, I mean, what's the problem in Hawaii with solar energy? But they yeah. said no. You have to be part of the grid. Like, who said you had to be part of the grid? I mean, that's just an insane capturing yeah. thing, right? It's kind of like, you know, you have to have gas. Like, well, I, yeah. do, I don't use gas for anything. I'm, you know, 
Why should I have to have gas? Oh, you have to have gas. So then you've oh, got man, that whole. You're opening so many different cans. Uh, like, do you want vaccination today? <laughs> I think uh, I think we're going to run out of time on that one. Yeah, or or all of it, right? Do yeah, you want but it all ties here? into the same thing, right? Like, who decides what it is that you want to do? And we have huge um, societal pressures on things that you know come from people like Coca-Cola, drink a Coke every day or whatever, and that cause you to do things that are poor for your health, right? I think, okay. and and then you've got the systems that we put in that we allow to be put in place that don't serve us, okay? Yes. Like it really, like you said, putting in these. In fact, I think there's a class action suit going against Hydro and BC now about removing all of these. I and, don't know. That would be but, even stupider, I suppose. Well, that's right. I mean, if, if you, well, because these people think that the waves given off by the devices is not very good. Which may be true because going from analog to digital causes its own problems. And this is, each one of them is actually a cell tower now, right? It's, right. It becomes a Wi-Fi hotspot. And there are people, and you and I both know them, there are people who do not do well with uh, Wi-Fi. Now, we do have solutions. We sell them at Life Enthusiast. Right. We have for you, if you're interested, we have for you a little gadget. I sleep with one all the time. Oh, in fact, I'll just fish in my... Oh, there it is. There's Scott. There's mine. Here's mine. Here's it's yours. just a little sticker. It's even that tiny flat. We can get you these things, and they protect you from the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, there's another sticker. Okay. I love that one. You can be protected from the... Um, the soup that we live in, right? Because you've got all these wire, all these, I was going to say wired, wireless energies that are floating in. And all you have to do is go someplace like um, the Monashi Wilderness off the, Retreat off the Center, off, off the, the grid. grid. You know, that you couldn't even get a cell phone signal there a year ago. They unfortunately put a tower up on the hill and you can. But they have no electricity. They have running water from their spring. Yeah. Uh, solar panels make the electricity. There's no internet unless you attach to your, your cell phone and you do have that tower. Uh, but there's no electric wires going on or, or hydro or anything going on there. It's totally off the grid. And uh, when you're in that environment, if you just stop for a minute and think or feel – it's a big difference. It is. It's very quiet. To, very quiet. Yeah. And then you hear those mosquitoes buzzing. And then you hear the mosquitoes buzzing, yeah. <laughs> I've only been there in January when it's been minus 30. There's been no mosquitoes for me. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> Had to sleep with two of their dogs in order to keep warm. Yeah, and when the snow falls, <laughs> it makes everything, like, oh, the noise dies yeah. down so much. Like, it just absorbs all the sound. It's just absolutely yeah. amazing. And I, I particularly appreciate it as I'm thinking about it when I, because I, here I am in Medellin and I'm in an area where the traffic is just, it's just as bad as downtown Vancouver. And I just like, oh my God, like it's just, and it just has that yeah. industrial feel to it, right? As opposed to the natural feel of the, of the woods. So all right, uh, I like it. Oh. So let's try and make some points that we have made today. There is a way to deal with viral infections, including malaria, for cheap, even Zika, for cheap. But the mainstream doesn't want to hear about it. And what is the product called that we have at Life Enthusiast? Uh, it's called Aerobic 07. Okay. It's just drops. You just put it in your drink works um so that's one two the political system is the problem because it allows for strong hands to buy influence which they do and only become stronger and the only way to get out of here is to undo this craziness of money equals speech where I don't know how this happened that this Supreme Court in the United States voted that that uh, it's not one man, one vote, it's one dollar, one vote. So with a billion dollars, you can buy yourself a lot of influence. 
So yeah. all of a sudden, the political process isn't about um, um, what's best for the community. It's about what's best for the people that pay me the most money. Yeah, you buy the votes. So a question the next time there's an election, who, regardless of what level uh, that you should ask is... Uh, who, bought you? who bought you? Who bought you? Like, what can we do to make sure that you do what's best for our community, not what's best for the people that financed your and election? I think, I think that's what, why we're seeing such success for Bernie Sanders. Yeah, and Donald on the Trump. Democrat side, because he is morally strong he's he seems incorruptible he's been saying the same thing that he's saying today 35 years ago and, and he the other, and the other is donald trump. trump you can't buy him because he has his own he's got enough he's money. on his own money yeah yep. well, he says what he wants why he wants when he wants and if you don't like it you're fired that's right the other thing with bernie that's really interesting is and i don't know that this number is correct but it's like the average contribution is around like seven dollars or seventeen dollars or twenty seven dollars like twenty bucks like, is what came to mind yeah yeah twenty bucks like it's not there's there's it's almost nobody although this may not be true but it's like there's almost nobody that's given him a million dollars or or half a million dollars or a quarter of a million dollars that may not be a hundred percent true but it's certainly uh, you know when you've got two million people giving you twenty twenty dollars that gives you a whole different um base than when you've got you know 20 people giving you a million dollars that's right yeah because the voice is very different right and like you said the morality is very different too it's really hard to say no to the guy who basically got you i mean it's the law of reciprocity it's the you know i'm going to give you all this money i'm going to help you here help you there and you know that i'm going to be asking i'm the devil right i'm going to yeah. be asking for your soul later on yeah. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, so I don't know. I think we just need to start at the grassroots and sort of say, okay, let's put a spotlight on the lobbyists. Let's put a spotlight on who's paying for what. And, you know, yeah. around where I live, the developers have obviously total control of City Hall. Like they're developing like tons of stuff. And it's just like, there goes a forest. There goes the side of a mountain. 20,000 homes get put up. And it's like nobody thought about how they're going to get in and out. Oh, they're going to drive. Yeah. Like the road's already full. How is it? Yeah, you know, now, now, the city has to, now the city, which means everybody, has to spend big bucks on building a, an arter, arterial uh, highway yeah. or something, right? Yeah. And where I live is a uh, bedroom community. Like everybody basically goes into Vancouver yeah. and works or somewhere else and comes back. So – it's a ghost town during the week, and Saturday and Sunday you can't drive anywhere. Oh, everybody's going shopping and stuff. And they're standing. It's like rush hour traffic, uh, two o'clock on a Sunday, because uh -huh. okay. the roads aren't made for that type of volume. And of course they all know it, but they're not going to say to the developer, "Well, if you're doing this, you need to help us expand this road, or you need to do something else." Right? Yeah, yeah. Not going to happen. So. I go back to my old uh, um, consulting message, which was what gets measured is what gets done. So what are we measuring? And if we are measuring the performance of our representatives, I think we need to just replace them. And yet 97% incumbent, incumbents get put back in. That's right. Because people just, are too lazy. The we devil you know versus the devil you don't. Well, no, we get what we deserve. If we're too lazy to uh, make change, we don't get change. I, I see that in my practice. People call me with a problem. They want help. They don't want to change. They, don't, they are unwilling to change their lifestyle, their behavior, whatever, whatever. They just want a pill. Yeah, the magic pill. The silver bullet. Give me the one thing, uh, fix it. And, and the one I thing that you and I both know is there is no silver bullet because, like in our fibromyalgia group, 
there's so many people that are complaining that my doctor gave me this medication, gave me that medication, and the problems I got from the medication were just as bad as what I had before, and I still have what I had before. So, and then they changed to another medication. And, I, and so I no longer have insomnia, but I have itchy toenails. So, and, and so it goes, right? <laughs> Can't yeah. scratch the inside of my toenails. But it's driving me crazy. It's driving me crazy, yeah. Well, or and so, so, the, so it goes. I was trying to make a point about the fact that people would love, I would love it too. Sure. Golly, I would love to have a simple solution. But I wrote this to, to uh, somebody today where they said, I got these five things from you. And you said they were the right things. And I'm not better. And I wrote back saying, well, a football team has 53 players on their roster. 46 of them suit up or may maximum suit up. And only 11 of them are on the field at any one time. Right? The offensive yep. team, the defensive team, this, blah, 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 blah. So the point is, how would I know that the five things that you picked are the right five things without doing the process, without right. going from the beginning to the end, without figuring out what the triggers are, which in my language, these are the causative factors that bring us worse rather than better. If we don't know what they are, just about anything will do. Anyway, I don't want to start on another whole new tirade. So how about this? People, you need to take control. You need to decide what's important and then work for that. That's right. Whatever, whatever we focus on grows, grows. Whatever you spend your money on grows bigger. Choose very carefully how you spend your money. And where you spend your time. Yeah. And if you spent a little bit of time talking to your congressman or your MLA or the president or your prime minister, uh, you might be surprised at some of the changes that can occur. And I know people who have been um, involved in identity theft and they just got on this bandwagon and they started petitions and they they talked to their MLA because it was in BC and then they, or their, I forget what it is at the federal level now, um, member of parliament. And then they took it to parliament and then they asked him to come to talk to some groups uh, who, who make the laws in parliament. And then they adopted pretty much everything that he said, right? So sometimes we think, well, nobody's gonna listen, right? And the truth of the matter is, is so few people speak up that when somebody actually says something, they listen because they really, I believe, deep down want to have the direction. I don't believe they're deep down, they're sinister, mean, evil people. I think they want to, I mean, if you talk to anybody who who is in politics, why did you get in? I wanted to help. I wanted to make a difference in our society. I had a vision for Canada or the United States. They didn't go in because they wanted to screw it up, right? So give, not that they don't, they do, we see that all the time, but I really think give them the benefit of the doubt, talk to them and be clear on what it is that you want and be firm because they are a public servant and which means that they should be your servant, not the other way around. And we need to, part of this whole thing is, is standing up and just saying, no, um, I'm the taxpayer is the boss, I pay the bills and so you got to listen to me. And, and kind of go from there. Life enthusiast, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. And to the political system. Uh -huh. <laughs> Rejuvenation of every sort. So you can find us at www.life-enthusiast.com. You can call us at 866-543-3388 or if you want to call internationally, 775-299-4661. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.